Hey folks, this is a little video uh, I'm going to do on this lightning arrestor. This one has been in service for, geez, close to 12 or 13 years. And um, these particular polyphaser, it's called polyphaser, it's the IS-50UX-C1. It goes from 50 to 220 megahertz at 375 watts, or 220 megahertz to 700 megahertz at 125 watts. The antenna connects to this side, your radio equipment connects to this side, and uh, the this would be grounded to a good ground, and uh, it would discharge a lightning strike. Uh, this one, um, I can't say for sure if it's bad or not, but the equipment that this was on uh, has failed. And uh, the antenna and everything just tests completely out of whack, so I'm kind of thinking it may have took a strike. So um, I want to basically take apart this polyphaser. Uh, there's no continuity from this end to this end. From pin to pin, um, I've always always been curious as to what is inside of a polyphaser lightning arrestor, and I figured, you know, since I had one here and I was going to clamp it just for the connectors, anyways. But I said, why not try and do a video and basically we'll see what is inside of a polyphaser. What makes a lightning arrestor tick? So, I'm just going to get my multimeter right here. If everybody else don't come with it, he knows how it is. So, we'll put, put her on continuity. So, it beeps. So, I'm going to put a probe on this side probe on this side. You get no continuity. You got no continuity at all. So inside is like an open circuit. So my question is, is a polyphaser an ear gap? Is it an actual ear gap? Is it a capacitor across here? Or is it a gas filled of some sort? Um, but I figured, what the hell, we're going to take apart this polyphaser and see what makes it tick. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm in for here, but I guess we'll start by taking these off. Um, looks like there might be screws here and here. I'm not 100% sure, but there's definitely something underneath the uh, sticker. Well, let's try to take off one connector. And see what it looks like. What do you say? I'm going to take apart a polyphaser so you don't have to. And as we know, polyphasers are quite expensive. They're over $200 these things. Very expensive. But I want to know how you work. I want to know what make them tick. What makes a polyphaser tick? Do the connector come off? kind of comes out. It's loose, but there's definitely something holding it. So, we'll do the same thing with this connector. We'll take this side off. There's definitely something holding the, the uh, center pin in place. What is it? Is the question. Is it a wire? 
Is it a capacitor? What is it? This side wants to come off. Alright. So this is the first time we've seen the side of a polyphaser. So let's take the cover off this polyphaser together. See what it looks like. Alright. Cover is off. So we do So what we have here we have this side which is the equipment side on a piece of brass and that brass goes through a little ceramic capacitor right here so there is a ceramic capacitor right there you see that then so the two sort of pins are indeed separated isolated and then you have this part here, which looks like a fuse. Kind of looks like a fuse. It's hard to say. But down there, it's got a marking on it. Not sure what it says. But let's see if we get continuity. So again, we got new continuity. Continuity there. Of course, you don't get any continuity through a capacitor. A capacitor is a capacitor, obviously. So. Continuity between the center pin and the, ch and the chassis of this. So, without a known good polyphaser, I don't know if this center piece down, if this, if this piece here, if, it, if it's the fuse, is supposed to be connected. Continuity. Um, is it possible to take this apart a bit more? Let's see how much further we can take this apart. Let's see how far more we can take this apart. So, don't go apart. So, this I'll call fuse. Hard to say if it's a fuse or what this is. I'm going to call it a fuse. Um, if it connects to the body here, if there's supposed to be continuity, there is no continuity. Is that normal? Well, I really don't know. Well, anyways, that, for all intents and purposes, is what the inside of a polyphaser lightning arrester. That's what it looks like. Anyway, there we have it. It's the inside of a polyphaser. Anyways, 
Hope the video was of uh, use to you. Uh, makes me understand a little bit more how it works. Still kind of curious if this here is a fuse or a capacitor down here. Um, I do have my little capacitor tester that uh, Dwayne donated to me. He went off Alpha Bravo. So let's let's try something here. Let's try and see if we get any continuity at all or uh, capacitance. Between the chassis, the main part of this, and the brass pin. I'm kind of curious, I don't know. I don't know if it's the fuse, or if it's a capacitor, or if it's anything. Doesn't appear to be a capacitor. Three point five picofarad. Hard to say. All right. Well, let's go from the ground. I should say from the brass part to the center pin of. The connector and see we figure out what kind of capacitance that little capacitor is. Five hundred and eighty-three picofarad. So the capacitor seems to be good. This wheat thing here. I'm going to say that I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if if electric if uh, lightning went through this through this side this side here if it went through here. It would pass a charge between between the plate here and the body of this and blow out that the uh, ceramic body of that part. I'm thinking if this was actually damaged, that that part there would be blown apart. Pretty cool though. Anyway, if you've never seen a lightning arrestor before, instead of a polyphaser, now you have. Anyway, that is it. Hopefully the video is of use to you and you find it interesting. Anyway folks, all the best. 7-3. And we shall chat later. Just read it 63. Right here. All the best.